Yeah. That's a close shot. Thank you very much, Stevie, for counting us in there. Um, now, uh, this is a girl talking. We're actually looking at a whole range of movies in this one. Before we went to the break, we did see from this video uh, some of Julian Clary's performance. Uh, have a sticky moment at home with Julian Clary. So, welcome back. And the next film we're going to have a look at is a film that I've selected. Woo! And it's called it's from Terminator 2, Judgment Day. There's the cover. And they're lining the tape up as we speak. At any moment, they're going to switch to it. That's such a close shot. No fun flattering. Oh, he wants me to cut down. It's so, I feel like I'm just like, you know, I have my head chopped off. What are you going to do? Why do we stop now? No, you got to promise me you're not going to kill anyone, right? Right. Where? What? Just put up your hand and say, I swear I won't kill anyone. I swear I will not kill anyone. All right, let's go. Missing hours is 10 to 4, Monday through Friday. What the hell are you doing? You son of a bitch! You shot me! Oh, we missed the last part, never mind. The most important part of that clip is actually when Arnold Schwarzenegger, who does play the Terminator, turns to the young boy and says he'll live because he had promised not to kill anybody. I think it's camp. I chose that movie, it's called Ter Terminator 2 Judgment Day because, well, why? I don't know, I just love car chase movies. And I think, I think, you know, I might be wrong here, but I, I, Arnold Schwarzenegger does sort of dress himself up as an archetypal leather man in this film. And it also has Linda Hamilton, who has a quite a strong following, I believe, amongst women. And she <laughs> does actually pump herself up in this movie quite oh, a bit. Does she what? It's <laughs> a, yes. It's the second film in this in the series. The first one, of course, is called Terminator. Now, Shay, we were talking earlier, before mm. we went back on camera, we were talking about how Arnold Schwarzenegger had a big change in his career from being the bad guy to the good guy. For political aspirations, you say? Yes, apparently he, he will be making a move into political circles. So um, you look at all his early films and he's always the bad guy and he's doing bad and he's beating and killing people. Um, so as a way to actually change public perception, he actually came back in the same character, but they just managed to turn him into the good guy. And then he went on to do, you know, little comedies like Kindergarten Cop, basically as a way to change public perception. So you reckon he's so going to be running for government? Yeah, yeah very far thinking, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> yes, I believe he's running for Republican, actually. That's a scary, scary thought. <laughs> oh, uh, had, I, had John, Matt, had you seen term the Terminator films mm. at all? What did you think? Because I know that Shay doesn't like this movie at all. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was... A, I think it, um, it was convenient that they made him, like, the, the gooder character in the second one. Um, but I thought it changed the whole theme of the film, that he was this, like, robotic, hard cruel, manic killer thing. And in this one, he's just an, he's, he's, he's got, he's actually got some sort of feeling. Oh, he's got more feeling? He's got more feeling, and I thought that, found that annoying. Yes. Yes? Oh, well, it's interesting <laughs> you should say. No, um, well, a note, just a note on that, the, the, the machine part of it. I think this movie is camp because it takes a gender type to the farthest extreme. Mm -hmm. You know, the best drag is totally over the top kind of, you know, um, playing on, I guess, female gender. I think Arnold Schwarzenegger really does play on masculine gender in this movie, to the point of being cold-hearted and steel, although he does have a little bit of feeling, as you remind us, John, as he's being lowered into that lava at the end. Oh. Oh. I think it's worth noting, though, that um, if you can see um, perhaps camp elements in that, then you pretty much can see camp elements <laughs> in a hell of a lot of things, are you? Oh, good mm. point. Of <laughs> course, yeah. the other point to say, this film, we should say, is directed by James Cameron. And it does have, well, at, the ti at its time, it had some groundbreaking um, te technology, oh, yeah. uh, special effects, not the least of which is the Liquid Man, that is in fact, in fact played by an actor called Robert Patrick. And you do, and I would not, this is not a reason to get the movie out, but you could do get to see him without his clothes on at one point of time. Oh, God. And the gay men all across the world are going to be looking at Terminator 2 <laughs> <laughs> frame by frame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, okay, we'll put that aside. I mean, that's no, no big deal. I just thought it was a wonderful movie. <laughs> Let's move on.
Uh, this <laughs> next film that we're going to have a look at, and we must be almost at the time, are we, Stephen? Probably got a minute to go, never mind. Is a film that you've chosen, Matt. Yes. And this yes. film is called Giant. And it, it, it is a classic, a big Hollywood a classic, classic movie. classic classic. Mm. Yeah. Well... It's got the legend, it's got the fag hag and the big old Hollywood out fag. Um. Is Rock Hudson the fag hag? Mm. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they're all fag hags. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's have a look at a clip from <laughs> Giant and when we come back we'll have a talk about this film, Giant. It's a big film, lots of effects. That's exactly what I was going to do. But she said to me, she said, you stay on here and you do your work. All right, so the next time I tell you to get, you get. Burden and get her everlasting jangling about something. Excuse me. Well, you tell that to Madame, and she's the one that told it to me. That's right. She was way back when needed all the help or was. You know how scared they are, her. They're scared to death of her, ain't they? You know that. And one of them scared that me and you. You just tend to your work. Well, you tell me who's the boss around here, and uh, I'll be glad to do anything they want me to do, baby. Tell me who's the boss, and uh, Jeff is Vic's new wife. Leslie's boy here is Jet Rink. No. Works for us. Gee, that 50 seconds goes so quickly. We should have gone for a minute, because then he, act he actually goes up and meets Liz Taylor's character, Leslie, doesn't he? Oh, oh never surprises. mind. Mm. That'll be a surprise. You Matt, yet, why yet. did you choose Giant? <laughs> well, I have to say, when I, was first, when I first saw Giant, I never saw any elements of what we've been talking about. Uh, tonight, but I think now that we come to mention it, yeah, it's just got so many things that we're, we'd be familiar with. It's got Rock Hudson, Liz Taylor, as who, as you said, <laughs> excuse that, um, is yeah, basically the biggest fag hag of all time. <laughs> I um, hate that expression. I think it's terrible. But go on. <laughs> it wasn't mine. <laughs> no, I know. I just repeated it. And yeah. and James Dean, who right. we see, yes. yeah, who is referred to it in some circles as the human ashtray. <laughs> but oh, I won't even others. say that. Yeah. Yeah. slander. No, um, so, and when did you first, d did you see this movie I first on I telly or on video? I, yeah, I've, I've, st I've still never seen it on the big screen. I'd love to do that. Yeah. Um, but it's just, it's a modern Western. It's, and it's just so much more, it's like it's got all the great elements of a Western, but it's even more exciting. And yet it's still really classy. And you know, oh, I just get so excited when I think of Giant. Um, it, yeah, okay, made in 1956, um, directed by George Stevens, and it was actually, well, actually, it was actually made, I think, 1955, because James Dean died that year, so it was released after he actually died. Really? Is, that um, was the last movie he made? Mm. Mm. Really? Mm. Oh, and, um, yeah, very one of short, prolific career. Mm. One of the other actresses is, is um, Mercedes... McCambridge, okay. yes, who, who's basically, yeah, associated... Um, with a lot of dyke roles, and we basically can, su can sum up mm. that she played that type of role here. <laughs> we can't and speculate on her sexuality. Though. No, we but can't. This is the Who thing. knows? We have but no th idea. That's the whole point, I think, of this yeah. of this movie and maybe other movies as well. Shay, and I'd be interested in your opinion on this. But this thing mm. that we read into the films, how we what we want from them, you know. I mean, it, it, in a film culture that denies you this kind of overt sexuality, then you look at other movies that which may be predominantly heterosexual and find your own meaning. Speaking of, um, sorry, I'll just cut you off there, um, mm -hmm. of finding your own meaning, I actually found with Giant something that I've never actually read anywhere or that anyone seems to pick up. When I read little reviews of it, it usually mentions um, uh, like a, a romance between Elizabeth Taylor and Rock Hudson and Elizabeth Taylor and James Dean and it's really trivialised it because I find that for me Giant is about a man who's discovering, ironically played by um, the the first openly gay film star in, in Hollywood. But he wasn't but out I was then going though. To say not openly gay at all. But Common yeah, but in the end, in the end, in the end, he was. But um, a man who's finding that his man's world is actually breaking down, and every every person in that movie, you'll find in the end, seems to be helping to deteriorate that masculinity. That he what, a, what a wonderful reading feels, of the movie. Yeah. Well, there's that the disintegration of that kind of patriarchal thing. And there's yeah. that fantastic scene where um, James Dean comes up and he's covered in oil. And, <laughs> and yeah, I just love that scene. 
Do you know that the end thing? Yes, yeah. I do. And, and like the way that he's done, um, doesn't want it, doesn't want to ride the ride the um, horse, and mm. the uh, the fact that his other son wants to become a doctor instead of. Um, oh, I think that's the same son. Son go, grows up, and his daughter doesn't want to do conventional things. Yeah, that's and right. It's, it's kind of like the meeting of the two worlds, the mm. absolutely yeah. pre-industrial and post-industrial. And Lisa, you were going to say something before. Yeah. Um, um, yes. What were we going to say? Oh, about um, how we read. We, we read in certain things into different into characters as a way to, I don't know, maybe find um, our sexuality in them. I was actually going to say, yes, we, we do do that. But um, I think they're also actually, they make those roles. They actually, they, they make them out to be, you know, lesbian and gay characters, but they have to be subtle about it, especially in those days. Well, we know that in the 50s and 60s there was an amazing censorship with scripts as well. So yeah. any... any um, as that sexuality would have been cut out. Of course, that, that brings us to the end. Isn't Already? It? It can't be well, we're end. going to take a few more seconds up. We'll probably we will run over time. We have looked at a whole range of movies in this, uh, in this, in this girl talk. Um, and let me just go through the films that we've looked at again. I know we need to wind up, but we're going to do this anyway. Only the Brave is an Anna Kokonos film to have a look at. There was, of course, The Red Shoes, which is a wonderful suggestion. Thank you, John. We looked at Terminator, uh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day. And last but certainly not least, Giant. Um, and all of these films are av available from your video store. This is Bent TV. If you're interested in becoming a volunteer at Bent TV, you can phone us. And our number is 9663-5902. We'd love to have you on board. We leave you with a scene from the Jane Fonda workout <laughs> clip <laughs> because it's also <laughs> very camp. Thank you very much for watching and oh, keep tuning good. in. <laughs> yes, it does. It's, it's, I owe my beautiful figure to Jane Fonda. <laughs>